so we might have seen uh, the most of the thing that like you know in the uh, in the concrete design we have studied about the single reinforcement section and double reinforcement sections and then we have studied about the you know the angle of the uh, t beams but here uh, there will be the different kind of beams so unlike so unlike other beams there will be the two kind of beams so one is we can mention it as the restraint so ssbc so one is we can uh, mention it as the restraint and other one is unrestrained beams so the restrained beam and unrestrained beam i will explain a little bit late but before that i i just want to give the introduction about the steel beams so these thing you might have i mean you might have seen many of the times so this is uh, actually your canteen and is uh, this is the slpc that building so you can see this is the uh, beam so this is fully the steel structure and along with some of the composite actions so whatever the issues you are feeling or if you are not uh, if you are not able to have an idea about uh, i mean sometimes whatever the things i tell may not be e easy to understand so you can go and check this building then you will have an idea about what i am saying so as you can see this is the steel building and uh, this is the primary beams and uh, these are the secondary beams so this is the same thing that we have studied in the concrete design right so beam has the different purposes but at the, at the same time you need to understand that the beam is a basic element but the design is not much uh, easy for the steel design easy in terms of when we do the design we will be able to understand most of the things but when it comes to the theory part and you know we need more understanding about the things that what we have studied in the previous anyway i will try to uh, give an over idea in this class and the next two class we will be uh, uh, performing the design for the uh, restrained beam and the unrestrained beam so the next two class will be mostly the design class so uh, make sure to be participate and then only you will be able to get the marks right and at the same time one more thing i wanted to mention that right so even though if you get the 80 marks on the each design eventually you will be need to get the 20 marks on the exam so to get the 20 marks minimum you, you need to get the overall uh, 40 marks in the exam so which means that you need to minimum attend one and one and half question so if you are not much familiar on the things that what i am saying right so please go and study from now onwards because exam will be definitely like you know the application part so uh, what we are seeing here is i am telling this is tension member and this is a compression member but in the exam you are you are going to do it and somebody will check even if i am not or anyway the expert also will look at the paper so exam will be a little bit like the actual actual problems so make sure to be um, you know be in the class and if you don't understand everything cannot of course i know that the design everything cannot be understand in the design class so you can go and google it so even the chat gpt and there are so many things available so uh, please uh, try to understand at least the basic things so if you are doing the masters then you can have a clear idea about whatever the things i am saying so as a lecturer i need to say the things whatever it is important for the design class so let's start so as you as i mentioned that the beam is very i mean it is actually a basic member and it usually transfer the load to the columns so at the same time Generally, we can refer it as the beam as the flexural members. So the flexural members means what? So, so generally, if you consider the uh, beam, right? So it generally deal with the bending movement and the shear force. So there are some of the you know the tension compression behavior, but mostly when we are dealing with the beams, we always going to talk with the bending movement and the shear force, right? So bending movement and shear force. So when you consider the bending movement and shear force, it actually it it does not vary along with the sections but i mean it 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 does not vary with the sections but when you're considering the length as well as the applied load the bending movement and the shear force will be varied right so make sure to have an idea about the bending movement and shear force anyway we will be doing some of the analysis part in order to evaluate the bending movement and shear force even though there is an equation available anyway, we have to have an idea about it. so generally if you consider that so uh, for the beams the most of the beams are constructed with the i and the x sections so i will tell you why is that but most of the beams are constructed with the i and the x section right so you might have seen some of the beams are not loaded with the uh, top part or the top part we can say it as the slabs and some of the beam we can mention it as the it is not deal with the 
the top part or either we can call it as the slabs so those are the parameters will be involving when we are considering the restraint or the unrestrained beam so in the exam if you consider some kind of the sections or some uh, some kind of plan is given you need to have an idea about to identify which one would be the uh, restraint beam and which one is not the restraint beam so make sure to have an idea about the restraint beam i will tell you what are those and before that let me give an overall idea what we have learned so we need to come from the introduction to up to now what we are going to learn so that you will have an idea about the things so let me just give an brief introduction so you can see this screen so what we have seen initially is we have studied about the introduction so introduction we had an idea about uh, idea about how to deal with uh, port and what are the uh, section properties that we need to be identified and mostly what we did was we did the elastic kind of analysis but when you considering the flexural members we are not just only with the elastic regions we need to go for the plastic region as well so the so if you are if you are not i mean if you are just staying with the elastic region what will happen is so when we have the you know that uh, when we have the huge load so we need to provide the huge systems eventually it will be it, it is not economically constant i mean economically not good so that we need to go a little bit deep in the in the plastic region anyway we will see when we come for the appropriate slides so we have done about the introduction and the second part what we did i mean uh, what we did was the tension member design so please understand basic about what does it mean by tension compression member and how these behaviors are right so if we consider the tension member what we did was we just apply the tension forces or so the tension force applied to the member due to the various reason that could be the load or wind load or whatever it is right so please understand what does it mean by wind load sometimes i will require as the cladding loads so those are the load you don't need to be familiar with right so the last class i mentioned in the in the concrete class i mentioned about how to calculate the load that acting on the particular beam anyway i will show it in the design class uh, i mean in the in the next class but uh, please try to understand these are the basic concepts so in the tension member what we just did was we just the cross section resistance checks because there will not be i mean this is not this is compression actually so when we considering the tension we just need for the uh, cross section resistance but when it comes to the compression member if you take the compression member so generally the column or the, you know some of the truss part will be in compression so when we did i mean we did four uh, two checks one is the cross section check and second we did for the buckling check so to check the buckling you know we did the classifications and then we uh, check the uh, buckling right so those things i hope you uh, hope you remember right so here generally we can refer it as the buckling check as the stability check and this the this the cross section i mean the uh, cross section uh, resistance we can refer it as the strength design so if i say it in the earliest part of the uh, lecture you might not understand so that's why i am telling the things uh, here so this is for the stability and this is for the strength so you might aware of that so when we are dealing with the strength we generally refer 6.2 section i mean in the ec1 i mean ec ec3 we just did with the 6.2 and and uh, similarly when we are dealing with the buckling we did with the section 6.3 so there are various provision available so the generally for the cross section there is tension compression and bending everything available and buckling also same so please we understand uh, these things right anyway since it is open book you need to do the design there is no option so you try to understand the concept and only you can perform the design in the exam right so what we did was using the uh, buckling check or the cross section we just did the iterative process so without knowing that you did the iterative process so the iterative process means what generally we are 
doing the check again and again until it satisfied so uh, some of the design i have seen that most of you are not just uh, did until the last time so you have to do until you have uh, until your criteria is satisfied otherwise the design will not be considered so that i just reduce even uh, 40 to 50 marks for each of you so try to do the design and understand the design so do it until it's uh, satisfied right and now we did it for the compression and we did it for the tension now the flexion right so we are now going to do the flexural member design so as i mentioned that what does it mean by flexural member it's always we are going to deal with the uh, bending movement and, and shear force mainly right so if you consider that the same thing it, it's going to be applied as what we are going to do it could be any kind of load is possible so you can see in your canteen building right so some of the areas you can found as the uh, the point load and some of the area you will be able to look at the distribution load so the whatever the load it it is eventually we need to control the failure that can be occur in the member or whatever the structure so then only we can stabilize our structure so that's a concept that we are going to deal with so what are the failure mechanism is possible due to the flexural member so that is what we are going to see next right so to understand what are the failure mechanism that can be uh, uh, happen right we need to compare with the both the compression as well as the bending right so let me i, I mean let me tell you something so even though the cross section uh, failure is uh, possible right mostly in the steel building the buckling resistance or the buckling uh, failure are the very very critical so the buckling can uh, happen in many way it could be due to the uh, local buckling or the global buckling so what does it, you understand that term no? what does it mean by local buckling and the global buckling right so there are many ways that a steel building can fail right so that's the reason why we are doing the classification and everything right so can you tell me what i mean why we are doing the classification so anyway you will have me try to understand so why we are doing the classification for the especially for the uh, mean especially for the compression and the uh, bending right so we need to check right whether our member have so whatever the member is it could be the i section or the h sections or whatever it is if one of the member have any kind of the uh like if there is some of the member is not kind of the longest member or either we can refer it as those kind of longest member as the slender member so i am i mean introducing them as the slender member so if we say right the member is very slender or the slenderness ratio is high so if we take the you know the longest ruler so what will happen is even just for the simul application it will bend but when we consider the simul i mean the smaller part it will not be something like this so more the slender what will happen is the member will not be much stable so as a i mean at the same time we need to balance the economical consideration and both the things so based on that we are checking the class so if the class is higher than what we preferred then we need to there's no option we need to change so those are the things so actually the what's the actual purpose of uh, purpose of doing the classification so even for the bending also we need to check uh, we need to check the classification right so the purpose i am telling so we need to check whether any any kind of this any kind of the slender member is available and it can goes for the buckling so it could be any kind of buckling local buckling or the global buckling or we can mention it as the uh, we can mention it as the flexural buckling so that's the thing we need i mean we have to check with the classification anyway i will give the more uh, detail in the upcoming slides but just to give an i mean sorry just to sorry just to recall the things that's been important right so let me draw a beam
right so let's say there's i mean there's going to be some of the load that's going to be happen about the neutral axis so you know very well that right sorry when we considering the compression membrane what we actually did was right so we just apply the load so we assume that load is going to apply exactly on the neutral axis so if it is not applied exactly on the neutral axis what will happen is there will be the imperfection so that imperfection also has to be has to be corrected but since we are dealing with the exactly on the exactly on the neutral axis when we when we apply the load what will happen is right most probably this region web region bent for the kind of the buckling so these things we can mention it as the local buckling and these things will be stable for most of the time so these the flange will not be go for i mean kind of the local buckling but when it comes to beam right you might be remember so if i can for uh, something like this right so generally you might have i mean aware of that most of the top part will be in compression and bottom part will be in tension right so now you can understand that so we have so when we are considering the compression member right there's only the entire part will be in compression right so there's nothing deal with the any kind of the tension so exactly one member is on the compression but when we are dealing with i mean uh, the beam right the top part will be in compression and bottom part will be in tension so now you might have understand that so when there's a compression there is will always be a buckling issue right so even though the compression whatever things we can mention it as right so the compression is actually causing the bending no right so i mean what we can say from here is right of course the most of the top part and up to this part can be go for the buckling right so this kind of thing we can mention it as the local buckling so if we can draw the i mean the stress behavior along the beam right so this will be something like this so the top part will be in uh, uh, compression and bottom part will be in tension so this thing you aware of that anyway i just want to tell you right now you might aware of that right so when there is a uh, c over t ratio so if, if you don't understand this c over t ratio things please go and watch the uh, uh, second lectures so i, I explain it but anyway i just uh, uh, shortly tell you what i mean what are the mean by that i mean, uh, I mean uh, what does it mean by that so if you consider uh, the c over t right if the uh, c over t is high so uh, what does it mean by that so it will more tend to be but right so it will be i mean the it can undergoes local buckling but right these things can be restricted in many ways right so let me uh, let me throw a, a slab section here you can see these are the series of beam so there will be any kind of thing slabs available okay let's assume that there are going to be a, some kind of slab something like this right now can you tell me right so you can think of it right so i just loaded with something like you know, it could be slab so either we can i mean introduce other term as the stiff mean stiff material or the very stiff flow now can you tell me will this will go for the local buckling what do you think so in this top part so you know if i just for the neutral axis the top part will be generally in compression bottom part will be in tension now can you tell me if i just apply the load or if i just you know 
loaded with some of the slabs do you think this will go for the buckley so especially the local buckley any answers there was an answer yeah because it will not go for any kind of buckling because the load that we have we have applied here is just restrict the restrict the movement so there will not be any local buckling right so these kind of beam we can refer it as the restraint beams this is what we can mention it as the restraint beam so the unrestrained beam means right so if you consider this i mean the, this stress behavior i hope you remember right from the previous things anyway i am telling so generally these stresses are happening along so so if you consider this is as you know this generally is as the x is which is generally uh, parallel to x so you can assume this as the compression right so there will be something like compression so what will happen is when I like you know these are these are very very parallel to the things so what i am talking about the local buckling is right so again let me show you this right so just assume i'm going to load it over somewhere here exactly on the neutral axis so what will happen is right it will start to go for buckling something like this so here you can see that flange will be in the local buckling condition even some of these part some of these part above the neutral axis it can go for the local buckling but here when we deal with i mean when we especially deal with the uh, compression member most of the part where if you consider the work right it goes for the local buckling but when we are considering these kind of the beams right so the top part will be go in the buckling so this kind of beam we can refer it as the unrestrained beams right so you can see for the restrained beam and the unrestrained beam the design will not be same so i mean the most of the time when we dealing with the beams so the sum of the part will be same but some of these buckling behavior will not be same so additionally this kind of uh, behavior we can call it as the lateral torsional buckling so generally i mean in 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 addition to what we did for the restraint beam we need to check for the lateral torsional buckling we can mention it as the ltb right so i will tell you these things when we are doing the design so that will make you so just uh, uh, familiar with these terms like you know lateral torsional buckling and right so i i hope you get uh, about the idea what we are going to do with the beam so if you consider the design concept right so the same thing that we are going to follow but the equation will definitely be same I mean, will not be same so if you consider the i mean if you consider the restrained ones unrestrained beam so let me write for the restraint beam we are going to check of course the local buckling has to be checked so there is some of like you know even though if we are just uh, loaded with the top part we need to check the local buckling right the second part was sectional resistance so when we are considering about the cross sectional resistance right here we are going to since i mentioned that the beams are mostly going to deal with the uh, shear force and bending moment right so we are going to check the moment capacity so moment capacity means you might aware of that right so when the moment is higher than to i mean the you might aware of the i mean the stress moment stress for the 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 stress right so if the bending stress is higher than 
the I mean the allowable. What will happen is it will be fail due to movement. Similarly, in addition, we need to check the shear capacity. Right. So, in the shear capacity, we will be doing uh, two things. Right? We will be doing two things. One is the shear yielding. Other one is shear buckling. So we can see these things in 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 detail. So actually, what will happen is when we are dealing with the uh, shear yield. So if the member is failed just because of the it reached its yield capacity, these things we usually consider with the uh, shear yield. And and similarly for the buckling due to the applied uh, the shear force, right? So. This we consider as this uh, shear buckling. We can see it, the things like that. The additional check we need to do is bearing check whether it can bear the particular load that's been applied. So, generally, you can refer this thing as the resistance to constraints. These things will be considered. So, we need to check the bearing check. So generally, in, if you consider the uh, code, right? So they have used the kind of this kind of language. So the transverse force, so it, resistance to the uh, transverse force will be mentioned, right? So as always, you know, in the SLS condition, we need to perform for the deflection. Why do we need to do the deflection checks? Because if the beam is I mean, bend something like this. So you can, I mean, I mean, mention that. So even if you consider this kind of beams, right? So if we, if it is, if it is, if it is slotted with that, right? It can go some kind of the deflection, something like this. No. So if we apply the load, so if it is apply the bottom part of the load, I mean, if you apply the load to the bottom part, the whatever the things I said will happen, vice versa. So that's the thing. So we need to check for the deflection thing. But when we considering the uh, unrestrained, what will happen is we are additionally going to check the same thing as the cross-sectional, whatever I mentioned here, right? In addition to LTB, LTB means lateral torsional buckling. So which means that the torsion effect also will be there because when we apply the more load, it can go like you know when we let's say if we, if you apply the load here, right? So let's say if 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 I, if I apply the load here. It will like it can go something like this. so it can there will be the torsional effect also will be involved for the unrestrained beam right so that is what i wanted to mention so let me go for the node i mean you can see right so the restrained beam is so what will happen is right so uh, what will happen is when we are applying Uh, you can hear me no? yeah when we are applying the load i mean when we are applying some of the element so it could be this slab so whatever it is right so as always the top part will be in compression and these are the tension flange so what will happen is there is only the global buckling or the just the bending so either we can mention it as the vertical displacement will only happen right so anyway, we need to check the local buckling as you know, since we are dealing with the design, but the main part or the main consideration will be the vertical displacement, only, which means that it, the applied load will not allow to make this the uh, top flange to go for the, uh, you know, the local buckling. And similarly, when you're considering for the unrestrained beam, right, so you can see, right, there will be the vertical displacement and the lateral displacement also the rotation so the rotation thing what i mentioned it as the uh, torsion so eventually it will give like you know there will be a kind of theta so this is the uh, calf part of the beam so other part will be go something like this right so you can see that so it will it, it is going to be bent something like this so these are the things will happen unsustained but when you're considering this beam so if you just considering this kind of beam what will happen is it will go something like this right so that's a that's a difference between the restrained and unrestrained beam anyway i want to show you one more thing so i am talking about the um 
uh, local buck, uh, uh, local buckling and everything so you can see some of the fear uh, some of the figures here right so these are the lab works that most of the thing done and these are the actual structures right so you can see the bottom flange is going for the buckling local buckling and similarly the top flange including the calf of the uh, work also went for the local buckling right so these are the effect that will come when we are loading it so this uh, you can see the flange is going for the um, going for the local buckling so this these arrows actually mention that right so if you just throw the uh, throw the uh, neutral axis so what will happen is right so this part will be in compression right? so you can separate something like that so it's just showing the compression and tension right so that's what about the basic now we can move to the uh, like the design right so as always what we have done for the compression member here also we need to perform the cross section uh, cross section classification as a aware of that in the when we are doing the compression design right even though i mean i mentioned about that we can see most of the thing in the uh, beam design right so we go for table 6.5.2 here uh, as i as i remember right so i i mean when we are performing the compression part we just only consider this as the part to the compression so even though it, it's mentioned it as the part to the compression you can see most of the members are just in the in the compression area right so i think it's not very clear if you get this code i think maybe right here right so you can see though it's mentioned as the part of the uh, part subject to compression right so the most of the part are just in the compression but uh, uh, when you are considering the bending or oh, either we can call it as the beam right so the calf part generally in the compression and other part in the tension right so i will tell you why these are these are different in uh, in a few minutes so those, those are the theory concept and i have tell you right so you can see here right so there are four kind of uh, four kind of class available right so most most uh, probably we are just going with the class one and sometimes we can go for the class two as well but we don't like to go for the class three and class four even when we but even when we considering for the beam we always avoid the class four. we never even go for the class four most of the time the reason is i will tell you and you will understand why but when we considering the class one two three right even their behavior also have some of the variation and that is how we need to check and i mean that is how all the equations are derived so i will tell you each of the things i mean uh, i mean how we are going to do that so these are a little bit theory part anyway we must have an idea about it so if we are doing if you want to do some of the research on the I mean, structural engineering uh, you have to have an idea about this right so let me just uh, draw an eye section so for my easiness i'm just drawing the eye section let's you can see this is as the eye section right so what i'm going to do is just assume it is loaded with the sum of things like this now what i am going to do is i am just going to apply the load p so this is not just a load p or this is not going to be the concentrated so which means that it is going to be increased so i am going to start from zero to up to certain level right so i will i mean i will tell you so if we consider this i section right what i am doing is i am just increasing the load now right so if we just throw the stress behavior right so if i throw the stress behavior so if i just if it is zero i think you might have remember this equation i hope you remember this equation this is the 
movement this is the uh, second movement of area for the movement of inertia and y is the distance between the uh, uh, distance between the neutral axis so the stress is generally given as something like this right so if i start i mean if i apply the load to the zero so what will happen is right so the movement will be I mean, movement is uh, movement is going to be zero so there will not be any kind of variation now if i increase a little bit what will happen is right so there will be small variation will happen in the stress similarly in the lab conditions right if i increase further right at a certain level it will go something like this so these things you, that you have already studied in this mechanics of material anyway these are things important so how much it can go any idea that so i can apply to the certain level so i mean uh, how much the value it can take up to the certain level any idea about that yes exactly so it can go up to the yield value so this is the fi so it can go up to yield value now let's assume this is a so this will be p by 2 this will be p by 2 my movement will be p l over 4 now if i increase to this part i right, so the top flange is already been i mean already filled with the stress like you know it's already reached to the fi so what will happen is if we even consider this uh, the stress over strain graph right so this part will be fi so it will go up to fi now if the member is very stiff the the stiff means other term we can say right if the slenderness is less if the if the slenderness is less or the members are not having the longest or longest plate right so this will be we can mention it as the stiff so you might heard about the stiffness right so if we, if if i mention about the member is very stiff so what will happen is when i am still increasing right after this fi what will happen is it will start to show something like you know this part the work part also will become the reach to the fi right so if i still if i if i keep on increasing eventually what will happen is right so the entire section will go for the fi so this part also will be in fi and similarly this part will be in fi right so this kind of class we can refer it as generally class one so the class one means generally there will not be any any kind of the slender members right so this which means that the entire part can go up to the yield limit so this kind of section we can refer it as the uh, class one in some situation right so if you consider the class 3 right so generally you might have aware of that if i just throw the same thing here just throw the neutral axis right so if you consider the class 3 it will go up to the i mean the top or the flange part will go up to that limit and then it will will not reach the oh these these work will not reach to uh, entire section will not reach uh, reach to that level and it will break at to certain point right so this is the class 3 not the class 2 i will come to class 2 later right so this is the class 1 and this is the class 3 so if you consider the class 4 it's very simple right so this is actually very worst case scenario right? so most of the time it will go something like that but when you are considering the design right so we don't actually go for something like this right so you, you can even look at the table right so the most of the thing i mean for our stay, um, i mean uh, safety ness so even with, since it is the class three right so we are still being a little bit of risk so the level of uh, level of risk will be high so most of the uh, time it will be generally referred to as something like this so assume we usually assume as 
it, it is not going for the fi config so you can even refer it on the table so if you go for this table right so you can see right so they have just assumed this part and they don't even consider this part because of the safety precautions because we are going to deal with the class 3 so that will be you know very uh, I mean very lowest section right so this is about the class 1 and class 3 even this is for the class 4 so class 4 is very even sometimes it it, it will not reach to the fy and it will start to fail so other thing we need to understand that right when we considering the class 1 class 2 class 3 there was a term called movement rotation curve right so movement rotation curve means nothing but we are going to deal i mean we are going to plot with the movement and the rotation that can happen right so the rotation will happen so if you just apply the first load so the, so we may not see with the make type right so if we had a chance to use with the sum of like you know the uh, ts we will be able to see the variation and the rotation so the movement rotation is very important part in any kind of design so if the movement capacity or the movement i mean generally we can refer it as the movement curvature right so it is it is very important part for any kind of design right so we always dealing with some kind of graph something like this and it will just give us an idea about right what kind of material is going to be in the plastic and plastic regions right so these are very important movement curvature so whatever the research paper you take you always have the movement and curvature graphs right so based on these i mean based on these parameters also the the class will be i mean the the the, the classification is going to be happen so if it is the class one there will be some certain limit and if it is class two there will be some of the certain limit so based on these parameters right this will be invoked right so not only that i mean we are talking about the c over t ratio right even though this c over t, uh, t ratio the increasing c over t ratio will i mean influence on the behavior right the additional behavior or the additional classifications will always come with these factors as well so these are the theory but when i say theory it will be like you know too much but when we do the classification it will be like a piece of paper but you need we need to understand the theory before we do the calculation so that's why so if you look at here right so you, uh, you can notice few things right so you can see when we are considering the uh, class one generally it has the high rotational capacity sometimes it, it i mean it is not exactly like you know the same thing sometimes uh, generally if you consider this class 2 it, it it will not come some up to some level it will generally break at this point right so this is the typical graph right so it will go something like this and it, it will be break somewhere here so if you consider these these rotation capacity right so generally the class one having the high rotation capacity and similarly the uh, class 2 is having very lower rotation capac uh, capacity similarly it will go like that right so even you can see right the class 1 and class 2 will have the same stress distribution but only thing will be i mean only thing going to be vary is the rotation capacity so that's the thing we need to understand from the class 1 and class 2 so the class 1 and class 2 right it has the same stress behavior but only thing is going to be vary that's the rotation capacity in addition to the class 3 right it's generally between these two lines i will tell you what are those so it just i mean it will it will help to uh, prevent the local buckling but it is not always so actually it is not even in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, plastic range right and class 4 it's very lower limit right so it's not even rich to the mel so i will tell you what does mean by, uh, what does it mean by mpl and mel so mpl and mel is actually what is actually referring me as the uh, uh, plastic movement capacity and the plastic movement capacity of the particular sections 
right so to understand what does it mean by plastic movement and elastic movement capacity we need to go for the uh, mechanics of material tensor you might be aware of the thing the section modulus uh, definitely you might have heard about it so the section modulus generally we can refer it as the you might be aware of that i over y so this i over y generally we can refer it as the section modulus so the i means the second movement of area or the movement of inertia and y is you know the distance from the top part to actually from the neutral axis so so when we consider the section modulus it can be it can be uh, divided as the two and is the uh, plastic section modulus other one is the elastic section modulus so based on the material properties the plastic and the elastic region will be decided right so this can be generally written as double jew so if it is if it is plastic so we refer it as a wpl and if it is elastic we refer it as t wgel so if you want to find the you know uh, the moment right so it could be the moment mpl right so you know this equation uh, sigma is equal to m over i into y so if you just arrange this equation you can write it as t m i o y is equal to sigma right so this as the section a uh, section modulus you can if you want to deal with just uh, and the plastic thing right so if you just multiply the stress with this let's say pl uh, wpl and eventually you will be able to get your mpl which generally refer it as the resistance right so this is what we are going to deal with for the design so this is what you need to understand so similarly one more thing you need to understand when we considering the class 1 as i mentioned the class 1 will be going to be something like this right so to find out the mp what i am going to do is right i am going to multiply my fi so this will generally reach to fi along with the my wpl so this plastic since thing since my class 1 is reached into the plastic but when you considering some i mean when you are considering for the class 2 i mean not the class 2 the class 1 class 2 will be have i mean will have the same behavior kind of but when you are considering the class 3 right so generally it will be coming it will come something like this so when you generally considering these things right so it we cannot just multiply with the fi into pl because it it is not reaching entire section is not reaching the plastic so we need to deal with the plastic feature so fi into last right so these things we will be seeing in the moment uh, when we are doing with the moment capacity this uh, moment capacity design but you need to understand this is how these equations are derived so i hope you don't have any issues at this at this level now we can move to the section classification table and we need to understand some more things uh, so then only we can Uh, do the uh, section classification so for my uh, explanation purposes i am taking this so you can either deal with both the things because this is actually both codes are same but the since uh, the this thing is very detailed i am just taking but when we do for the design we are just going to deal with the concise code now you can see as we did in the compression member what we actually did was right we just I mean, what we have done is we have found the uh, internal and the external, like or the outer, outer flange classification and the internal part, or the work, uh, work classification. And we did the, I mean, we select which class it's going to be. So if it is lower, like if it is if this uh, work is class two, and if this is the class one, so this both part are the are the class one. We assume this is the class. Two sections, since we deal with the part of the compression. So the same thing is going to be applied here. So when we are dealing, uh, when we are dealing with this, so we are in the sheet one one three. So the same thing you can see over here as well, right? So part is bending to, uh, I mean, 
part subject to bending right so here when we are dealing with the i mean internal part or the internal part what actually going to deal with that we are going to just deal with this table right so we are just going to deal only with this table right so you can see here so these are the limits so you can see the variation and now you understood that i mean you might have an idea about why do i mean why do we need to uh, take class 1 class 2 and class 3 as separate cases right so each kind of I mean, each kind of material behavior is very i mean each kind of classification is varies so that we need to consider something like this so this is for the internal compression part now i mean if you consider this right so these are the epsilon that you can found it here c over t ratio generally we are obtaining through the section property step so uh, this part i mean this things is applicable for every case so it could be you know any kind of the c section or generally the c kind of section we can mention it as the channels uh, sections and these are the hollow sections right so uh, whatever the section it is right so these things will be applied now if it come to this part right so outstand flanges so you, you know what does it mean by outstand plan uh, outstand uh, flanges so if you are not i mean if you don't understand the things please go and look at the lecture 2 so where i mean explain about the compression member and i explain everything right so since we are dealing with the outstand flange right so you can just see one thing right it is just mentioned it as the part subject to compression so what do you think which column we can refer so are we going to deal with this column or just only this column but here you can see just mention it as part is subject to bending so the same thing even you, you, you can look at over here right so they don't even mention anything about like you know bending do you have an idea about why is that so it has a reason then uh, i mean why do we okay so it has a reason why do we need to consider something like that right so if you consider so uh, when we are dealing actually with the compression as i mentioned that right so the every part will be in compression so we just deal with the compression but here when you are dealing with the i mean when we consider the stress uh, the stress distribution right so if you consider the internal part right, so generally it will be going to be most of the time something like this but here the top part the uh, compression will not be i mean the stress distribution is 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 going to be same as what we have seen in the compression member right so that is the reason why we i mean they did, they did not provide any additional part for the outstand flange so what we are going to refer it right we are going to refer the same thing that what we did it for the compression member so only thing is going to be vary when we deal with the bending right we need to check only first column for the internal compression parts and in the i mean outstand flange there will not be any variation right so uh, hope you get that so uh, that's the only thing we are going to deal with the classification anyway we will do uh, one more exam we will do i will do an example in the next class or the our interactive session sometimes and for little in this one i will do it so for you as well but we will do uh, uh, one or two example and we can have an idea about how we can perform it anyway you have an idea already definitely but so anyway we can see that so that's the only thing i just wanted to mention here about the classification so right so you can see this table i just put it for you so you can refer everything in uh, one slide rather you know i have seen somebody like to refer the code so anyway you can see the things over here so this is what about the classification so do, do, uh, do you have any questions so far if you don't have any question i will just get somebody else wait anyway 
you can mark your attendance now and then we can look at the design why do we need to take so separately when why can't we do for in I mean, as one thing so let me again go remember right so if you if you consider this so right so let me assume a column and i am going to apply a load over here in video whatever it is now if you consider this right so as i mentioned there this part come you know though it is just an i section uh wait uh, couldn't you mark the attendance Uh, no, sir. Literary students don't have access to uh, attend on software. Yes. Uh, but uh, the, the head mentioned that to mark that, ask them to mark, mark the attendance sometimes because I don't know. But he asked. Uh -huh. So I think if you are just uh, logging through the uh, this, like. All right. So if you look at this kind of, you know, it could be any kind of, it could be beam or column. Right, so you can see this is as you know I section, or whatever the section it is, could be a section or whatever section, right? So you can, though it is the as uh, one section, it has the different plate and it, it can be considered as the three different plates which is attached and made as one section, right? So, so if you consider these kind of sections, right? These both part will not be same sometimes. So the length will not be always same. Right? So these are, you know, this is the flange and the length or the thickness or whatever it is, like you know, the the length and everything or either we can you know simply mention it as the geometric prop, uh, geometric uh, properties, right? So these will not be same and for here, right? So I mean, why do we need to mention about the internal part and the external part is, right? So if you consider this, right? So this is the, uh, this is the flange, right? So if you consider this as the thing, right? So it, it's like, you can divide this as the, this as the plate, right? So each part is going to behave differently, right? So we can combine these two as most of the time these two parts will have the same kind of the geometric properties but web will not have the same kind of properties right so it will have the different kind of thickness so you might have seen that like you know we are just taking tf or tw something like that you know sometimes so the the the, the properties will not be same but so the uh, same consideration will come here right so when you apply the load here right if this member is very very slender so the thickness are not like you know the slenderness c over t ratio right so if the c over t ratio is higher right so which means that t might be lower or the c might be higher so what will happen is only this part can go under the lateral buckling what oh, sorry not the lateral buckling, local buckling, right? So the same thing could happen, right? If it's very strong enough to sustain whatever the load that we are playing, but this part can go for the lateral buckling. So any, either of part can go for the lateral buckling. So as we are dealing with this kind of design, right? We always, we, we, we always have to check whether these both the parts will be in the same class or the different class. So if it is uh, higher than, I mean, if it is if it is higher than class three, what will happen is the local buckling cannot be prevented. So with this section, the local buckling will not be prevented. So that's the reason why we need to check each part separately. So and then we are taking the lowest one. So why we are taking the lowest one because it, it is class one and class two the class two will be 
the so west and we can assume that oh, uh, whatever the design engineer is, is there we can i mean he, uh, he or she can consider that this will be in class 2 so this part will be in the local buckley so as a thing what he will do as in order to sustain these kind of uh, problems he can additionally put the lateral support here right so you might have seen some of the columns right so there will be the lateral support so he can prevent this uh, Buckley. Okay. So that's the reason why we need to check and we need to provide based on these, uh, uh, these uh, local buckling parameters, we need to additionally provide the first train supports. Right? So you can, if you had a chance to look at some of your and the uh, tendon buildings, there are additional support for the, you know, the lateral restraint is provided even even if we consider for the, I mean, the uh, secondary beams, the most of the time it will be act as the restraint. So, which means that, so I will show you here in the lecture note. So, even you can see here what they are doing is actually, right, it does not allow this part to be buckled. So, it could be local buckling or whatever the buckling it is, right, it is restricting the buckling. So by by reducing the lens, we can reduce the buckling. So that's what all about. So that's why we need to check for each part and each kind of class. And eventually, we need to assume that. I mean, we uh, we need to find that which class it is it is going to be, and based on that, we can perform the design. So these things I have mentioned, I I missed that part. So anyway, these are things we are going to check with that. And I have already mentioned these things. So these things we have done it. Okay, thank you. Understood. Now we can move to the design. So I wanted to explain the same thing along with the design, but you know, anyway, next class, as I mentioned, that we are going to deal with the design. I will just give an overall view that you know why do we need to do these kind of checks and these things. So we can you know uh, freely start the design in next class. So try to be present. Eh? Now, as I mentioned that, right, so beam, there will be two things, one is bending, other one is, other one is shear, right. So first, these are the easy thing, the same thing that will be going, I mean, that is applied. So why we are, what we are doing is we are going to deal with the cross-section resistance. So the cross-section resistance, as I mentioned that we need to go for the section 6.2 for both the things you can see. For the especially for the six and six point two, the resistance to the resistance to the cross section, and the same thing you can see here, which is the resistance to the cross section. So we need to go with the section six point two, where you can find. So this is what we have. We will use it, especially when we are dealing with the tension and the compression. Now we are going to deal with the bending and the shear. Right. So you can see this. So there are so many provisions and you know some of the advanced uh, th advanced things are mentioned right so for our level what we are going to do is we are going to just they just limited to the, uh, this part so we are we are not even going to consider any kind of the class four things so even though we need to find effective and you know, we can do the more economical design but at this level we don't need to do with that we can just going to deal with these things. And these are the advanced thing like you know i just want to tell you so you can you can refer and understand if you want to you know if you understand more things right so the, these are actually the bending in both axes so generally what we generally consider it is bending in the one axis so i will explain what does it mean by both axes for your understanding but at this level you can we can just assume the bending is going to happen in the one axis so the axis also involved when we deal with that so i mean I just wanted to tell you that. So, so if you consider these kind of beams, so if you consider the neutral axis, generally these are referred to as the minor axis and these are the major axis. So if you just apply the load to the major axis, always always remember, so you can try it with the, uh, the flexible ruler so always remember if you are just apply the load to the major axis it is always jumping uh, jumping into the minor axis and it will bend 
so these things just uh, understand i mean just uh, just remember I mean, if i want to explain it that we need to understand about the in plane behavior but just understand that if i just apply the load to the major axis it will always uh, trying to jump to the minor axis and it will happen so even even you can take this ruler and you can assume this as the major axis so if i just apply the load over here what will happen is right you know you can understand that this is always trying to bend along the i mean other axis so if i apply it to the major axis it will always happen to the minor axis. so this kind of behavior we can mention it as the outer plane but uh, just for you understand if you are willing to do the research on structural engineering that you need to have an idea about anyway we can we can see this here right so these are the advanced parts so if you wish uh, you can treat it and same thing we are going to apply for the shear so first let me explain about the bending right so these things i have even mentioned that so wpl or fi that you know when we are dealing with the plastic but here the same thing so when we are dealing with the uh, when we are dealing with the cross section resistance right so the med where can you find your med right so these are the cross section resistance right with respect to the uh, bending so med generally we can found it through our structural analysis right so most of the time when we are dealing with the beam so i might ask in the quiz i might ask in the quiz as well that's not actually a quiz but most of the people <laughs> second time i don't know why anyway so generally we refer to the wl scatter 8 for the simply supported beam and we can use it and find it the our med and when we find the resisting force i mean when we need to find the resisting movement right for each kind of class right so it has mentioned different kind of equations that we have seen in the in the code as well right so when you consider the class one and class two so as mentioned that we are always going to go with the plastic range right so the plastic range or plastic movement so which is the mpl mention it as the mpl at and i i mentioned right so when we are dealing with the plastic so we have to deal with the plastic modulus so when we are dealing with elastic we need to deal with elastic modulus so for the uh, class one and two you know what does it mean by fy yield strength and pl is the plastic uh, plastic modulus and gamma m not you know this is generally 1.0 so uh, this is what it, it is going to happen when we are dealing with the class one and two as we know that always class one and two is in the in the plastic limit so when you considering about the uh, when you considering about the uh, about the class three as i mentioned that it will not every part will not reach their plastic limit so it will generally go for the elastic uh, the elastic limit so we need to find our elastic things so where can we found these things so do we need to find manually of course we don't need to so the fortunately when you look at our property table right so you can found most of the thing in the in the property table right so elastic modulus and the plastic modulus are given so you might have aware of that so it's generally mentioned about the minimum and we will see that things later so we need to deal with the axis so i will come when it comes to the design but you can found the plastic modulus and the elastic modulus of each sections in our section properties table right so i just wanted to give an idea so you can find and fy also can be found and gamma m not all also can be found and eventually you will be able to find your mcrd and you will be able to find your med through structure analysis so you can verify that whether your section is having the bending resistance or not so i hope you this thing understand i mean it's very understandable right so we did the same thing here anyway so this is for the bending and other thing for the shear so the shear is always the critical for any kind of members that we are taking i will explain this equation but before that we can see the uh, verification so this kind of thing we can mention it as the verification in the design so generally we always check that our resistance force is i mean the resistance force is uh, higher than the design shear force right so this is this is the design philosophy and 
you can see these equations right so when we are dealing with the shear so you can see absence of torsion the plastic shear resistance can be given by this equations so there is a reason why they are you know when we are dealing with these uh, when we are dealing with uh, uh, bending we just uh, put the fi but when we I mean, uh, when it comes to shear, we just using the Fi over root three. So that's the reason. I mean, uh, re uh, reason I will tell you how. At the same time, additional parameter we need AB. So this is not just the area of the section. We need to find the shear area. So how we can find this uh, shear area? That is uh, that is going to be our next. Uh, task so even if you refer your code right even if you refer your uh, code there is already given the equations for the av anyway i will tell you about i mean uh, how these equations are work right for i will tell you now but you can see i put the things over here as well so this is the av other term other other thing you need to understand about load parallel to work and other thing is load parallel to work that thing you need to understand so what does it mean by load parallel to work anyway i will tell you about everything so let me go now let me again take an I section for my convenience. Now, again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply my dot P over here. Now, De uh, definitely you might have an idea from your mechanics of material can you tell me now right so if you take an i section right so this is the flange you know and this is the web so please tell me which part is going to be in main uh, generally if you take these kind of i sections so some part is going to uh, be at the bending and some part is going to help for the uh, shear. So, I mean, the, some part is going to resist the bending and some part is going to resist for the shear. So, can you have an idea about that? So, can you just uh, just uh, recall the things? So, which part is going to resist the bending and shear? So, it is important that when we deal with the design, so now you understand why structural analysis, everything, mechanics of material is important for your life. Anyway. I didn't get an answer, but I will tell you, right? So, generally, if you consider this, most of most of the thing, right? So, I'm just mentioning most of the flexural bending is resisted by flange. So, which means that if you consider the things, right? So, the most of the bending is generally resist by the flange. And the shear is going to be resisted by this web. So, this will be, uh, you know, if you consider this, you know, let me draw one more time about the shear force and bending moment. So, Please just a little bit uh, recall the things about shear force and bending moment. So if you just apply, if you consider the point load, what will happen is, you know that uh, the bending moment is going to be something like this. So this is the P by two. So our VED generally defined as the P by two. Right. So this thing you know, this will be changing. So you know about positive uh, shear and negative shear. And similarly, if you had a chance to draw the bending moment, so this is so this is PN by four. So if we, if it is UDL, then it will be draw something like this. So this thing that two seven. 
uh, do you have to have an idea about it. So now, one more thing we need to understand about the, uh, from the basic, right? Again, if I just write this equation, you need to understand that if my y is increased, so y means what? Right. So if my y is increased, my bending capacity also will increase, no? So that's the thing, right? So even if you consider this, m will not be vary. So m will be vary with the with, with the length and the applied load. So if applied load, and so if you consider P L over four, if there's if there's no variation in the length, if there's no variation in the applied load, the moment will not be vary. Even if you consider the second moment of area or the moment of inertia, that is also not going to be vary. So the bending stress is always you know uh, deal with this y so you know this is y so if my section is so the top part is going to be higher like you know if the if, if phi is increased what will happen is my bending stress I mean the the resistance to the bending stress will be increased so this thing you need to understand so the, uh, this thing important when we are doing the design i just want to mention so if you look at this equation, VPL over RT, you know, this is AV, FI root 3 over gamma M0. So the FI over root 3, that's the reason, I don't know, I mean, I hope you have done this test, the tensile stress, and you might submit your reports. So then it's been done by most of the BSC degrees. So you might have seen this kind of arrangement. There will be the two holes, and generally what we do is we just pull and throw our uh, stress over strain graph. Right. So we know this is the our Fi generally PDT something like that. So this is what we are doing it. Now this is the axial load. No. The shear means right. You know if you consider this uh, shear right. So if, if you consider this shear generally. It is uh, it is happening parallel to the plane. So generally, it's generally the shear is generally it's happening something like that. You no, know? it's generally like something like this. So the same thing. If I am not going to apply any of this axial force, and if I just going to apply, these are the uh, experimental thing. So you need to understand why we are using it rather than just uh, using blindly. So if I am just going to apply the shear force, and if I draw the same. The stress over strain graph, right? My yield thing will be happen right after Fi over root three. So these things have have been found through the research studies, and they have incorporated over here. So that's why we need to apply the Fi over root three. So that's the reason why we are just applying Fi over root three. Now we come to the AV. So this AV for the I section, again I am taking the I section for my convenience. No, not okay. Let me write this equation. I, I don't know. So you can see AV is given as A minus A is the actual area that can be also found in our TF. So this should be right here. Right here. So this is actually TF. Let me draw a section. So generally we can refer it as this as the fold section. So if it is fold section, I mentioned that to the R is how much like these things I have mentioned about the interactive section. So the roll section means this will be there will be a, some kind of roll. So why is that roll? In order to reduce the stress distribution along this joint. So, if you consider this, right, so this is actually the equation. Now we can see how our stress area is going to be. So, we know this is the, this is our B, yeah, this is the TW thickness of work, and this is the thickness of our flap, and these are the R. So, then we put it as. R, right? We know this is R. So this is the total area 
So in order to find my AB, what I need to do is I need to, I mean, I can replicate this equation into the graphical form. So we can see, so A minus 2B TF. So 2B TF. So the area right after this, this is going to focus on this level. Right? So this level is focused from this equation because 2B minus I mean, 2B into F. So this area, I have, I had I mean, this area, this area is uh, detected from the actual area, no? So BF is an area. So two means the two parts going to be detected. And then I need to add this part. So if you want to add third part, now you can see this is the web thickness and this is the R. So R is given something like this, right? So if you can, if you can draw this straightly, right? So you will have this part. This part is going to be like so this part will be also uh, coming under the shear so if i just divide by two and uh, distribute this into the top part this is actually right so if you consider this entire part this part will be considered as our shear area, right? So that's why we are doing so. It is so the this part will be for the shear. So that's what I mentioned about things, right? So this I mean the middle part, work part will be for the shear, and bending part will be uh, resisted by the flanges. So this part will be I mean this part will be resisting the bending. So if you consider the same section, so sometimes if you are asked to design only for the channel sections, right? So the uh, same things is uh, going to be applied. Even this part will be in the bending and bottom, I mean, the middle part will be for the shear. So that's the thing you need to understand. Now I hope you understand. So this part we can consider it as the shear area and based, uh, based on that we consider, I mean, we can evaluate our PPL RT. So I think you understood this part. So I mean, that's all I just wanted to mention about this uh, shear design. So up to now what we have seen about the uh, about the cross-section uh, uh, cross resistance, right? But in some situations, right, sometimes we just may have to be deal only with the elastic shear resistance, right? So if it is elastic shear resistance, then we need to just deal with the uh, uh, just de deal with our shear stress, right? So these things a little bit advanced, just put it. But anyway, you might uh, you might remember the equation like you know. Uh, I mean, I don't know whether you might remember or not. There's an equation called SA y over i b some kind of equation for the bending stress. I hope you remember this equation, right? So based on these equations, right? It's been it's been actually derived, but I'm not going to go. But just for your understanding, you can see and have an idea about this is how it's been done. Right. I mentioned that for the shear, we need to take two things. One is for the yielding. Other one is for the buckling. So here, I just wanted to give an inter I mean, overall idea about the shear. So if the buckling is uh, buckling is happening due to the shear, how we can deal with that? So that's a thing. So if you consider this equation, right? So H W means web height and T W means the thickness of the web. So it is not not about the entire section. So if you take this section, so you know this is the H W. And you know what is meant by TWG. So if this condition is higher than this, right, then we can assume that there will be the shear buckling. So which means that we need to again deal with the other part of this is the actually part five board and we need to deal with it. most of our cases, right? So as I as I aware of that, most of our cases that we are going to deal with the sections will not have any shear buckling effect. 
but the shear buckling effect actually comes. Let's say you might be, you might have seen some of the kind of some of the building. I mean, not the building. Actually, when you deal with some kind of these steel bridges, right? So generally, these kind of the bridges generally go like the two meter, one point five meters. So generally, it will go like two meter. So if you had a chance to see that, that will be great. So these kind of things, right? So this will not be satisfied, and then we need to go for the shear buckling check, and we need to refer this part. Anyway, we will be uh, we will be always checking that whether there will be issues or not. But anyway, we can see that when we do for the design. So this is for the shear buckling, and additionally we need to check for the bending and shear. So this will be the combined effect. So we can see when we do for the design. And also the buckling resistance. So buckling resistance need, uh, and then I would like to explain it. So it's almost 840, and you know it's not appropriate to tell everything at this point. Sometimes it might be yes. So just go through the things that what I mentioned. So these are the basic things. So entire basic thing is involved in uh, uh, this lecture. So the reason why I ask you to first do the design in the previous classes, then only. You will be familiar with the term what I am going to talk about. So, I hope you have an idea, at, at least a little bit an idea about what does it mean by local buckling, global buckling. What I mentioned about that. So please go through the things one or two times, and if you don't understand, just you can talk with me. Or you, there are so many other resources available, so you can refer the library books, and there are many things. So please go through it and have an idea about. So. The next class we will be doing the design. So we will be starting with the mostly the unrestrained, and then we can move to the restrained. Or oh, anyway, it could uh, uh, happen anyways. So please, uh, I mean, please come to the next class so I can explain about the design for the restrained beams and unrestrained beams, and we can start our design. And similarly for uh, tomorrow also there will be a class that mostly I will be. Starting the concrete design, so please try to be presented, and I will just uh, uh, planning to explain about what does it mean by singly reinforce and doubly reinforce, and how these parameters will be come when we are performing for the beams. So please try to be presented, so we can have an idea about, and then we can move to the concrete design as well. So the concrete beam design and the steel beam design will be happen at the same time. So that's what I want to inform. So I am going to stop here. And please go through it, and we can meet on the next class. So thank you for participating. And if you have any questions, you can ask now.